All right, let's talk the fight business, son. Business. So some of you may have seen that uh, George Masvidal pulled up on uh, Jake Paul yesterday in what I would only assume uh, or basically know for 100% sure was a publicity stunt. And if you're like me, you got to be asking yourself, why would George be doing a publicity stunt when he's retired, right? He's done with fighting. He hung up the gloves. Not so fast, you know? Not so fast. He's not retired after all, you guys. And he may or may not be fielding some incredible offers that have some pretty dicey, you know, uh, implications because of, uh, you know, uh, we'll get into it, right? We got busy. We got fight business to talk, son. We got to talk about the fight business. And we're also going to talk about Nate Diaz, who is also involved in some heavy fight business because he's fighting Jake Paul. And he also started talking about his Conor McGregor rematch. He made some statements about that. And we have to talk about all of it, right? Whether he's going to fight him in boxing or MMA and why. And his contractual situation going into this Jake Paul fight. And then Nate, uh, the Masvidal thing, how it all plays. Anyway, we'll talk about all of it. All right. So uh, I did an experiment yesterday and I didn't ask. I didn't like, you know, just go, hey, guys, do you mind subscribing to the channel? And it was a failure. You, you have to do it. If you're, you, you got to do it. So, so if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, I would appreciate it very much. Please like this video. I promise you, if you had a YouTube channel, I'm looking right at you, dude. If you had a YouTube channel and I watched your channel, I, I promise you I would subscribe to it. So if you watch my videos, please subscribe. That's the cost. I love you guys. Thank you very much. And let's just dive right into it. We're going to get into some serious sponsorships this weekend, though, from my favorite sponsor, Sheath. That's a preview. Anyway, all right. So, uh... Here's the deal, okay? So yesterday, I'm not gonna show you guys the video because it's actually kind of hard to watch, you know? Like, if you're a little bit allergic to cringe, it's a little hard to watch. But George Masvidal pulled up on Jake uh, Jake Paul, and they had a little square off. It's all, what's up, dude? I thought this is your city, dog. I thought this is your city, George Masvidal. Masvidal's all, this is my city, man. What you doing in my city? Oh, what, 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 what? It's like, okay, guys. We all know they're friends. Right, we all know they're friends, but here is some really strong evidence that this was not real, right? So these guys are genius marketers, especially the Paul brothers, right? So these guys, whenever they do anything, look for clues that they might be maximizing visibility for this or that, right? So it's like, what would Jake like to maximize visibility on? You're all, well, Jake Paul, of course. It's like, well, yeah, of course. He wants to maximize visibility on his own stuff. But did you notice anything else that he may have promoted a bit in this, in, you know, inevitably viral video? Hmm. Do, do, do. You guys, just tell me what you see. Where exactly did Masvidal pull up? Hmm. Where'd he pull up? Right. He pulled up at the better warehouse, right? Like better, I believe, I, I might be butchering. I'm pretty sure better, right? Like Jake Paul's social media, like combat sports social media, the better, B-E-T-R. Like he's all, oh man, here we are at the better warehouse and Masvidal pulled up. Like that's like the first line, you're all. So if a violent street person like Masvidal, who has been known to attack people, really pulled up at your place is that a thing you're gonna say you know well here i am at the business that i really hope you guys check out better.com better handle b-e-t-r at instagram we were here just minding our own bit and here he is wait what wait what you guys what george masadol's outside oh my god what are we gonna do well we better go out and meet this challenge he's like all right hey man I thought this is your city. And George is like, yeah, well, it is my city. That's why I came to better to confront you. It's like, okay, guys. <sighs> now, obviously, anybody who watches this channel, I'm sure that you were smart enough to know that this was a setup from the beginning. But what you should have been asking yourself, and I'm sure all of you were, is why are they doing this? Right? Why are they doing this? George is retired, right? George is retired. And as we found out from George St. Pierre, okay, if you're a star and you retire from your UFC contract, you don't get to just do the things you want to do. Like as an example, George Masvidal wanted to box Oscar De La Hoya. And the UFC was like, I have an idea. How about no? How about no, George St. Pierre? If you want to fight someone, you come do it in UFC. We have you under contract. You're one of the biggest stars in the world. We're not just going to let you go give money, especially 
to my arch nemesis that I hate more than anything, Oscar De La Hoya. You're not, no, no, no chance. Come fight here, right? And so the point is, we all know that when guys retire, they're still under contract with the UFC. Masvidal has signed a new contract when he fought uh, Kamaru Usman in that replacement fight and he got paid, right? And we, okay, so bottom line, Masvidal had fights on his contract. So him retiring, he's not a free agent unless the UFC allows him to be a free agent. So what are they doing? Are they setting up a Jake Paul fight? Maybe, maybe. Here's what I can tell you for sure is that there are multiple, multiple suitors looking to fight Masvidal in boxing. And Masvidal is looking to fight one of said suitors in boxing. Think about the options that he has, okay? Tommy Fury, Logan Paul, Nate Diaz, Jake Paul, all very, very legit suitors. UFC, still under contract, okay? So why are they all circling around? Why are they doing this? Because there is way there are ways for this to actually happen even though he's under contract with the UFC, okay? Can't get into the details of that. What I can tell you is that Masvidal inevitably is going to box one of these guys, okay? There are ins and outs of this thing that I know that I can't really get into the details of, but what I'm telling you is Masvidal is going to box. That's happening, dude. It's just a matter of who and when. And those four options are the most likely, right? It's like, just look at, you know, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, uh, Tommy Fury. Those are the most likely, right? Just think about it. It's, those are the most likely, okay? And so with George Masvidal doing this publicity stunt with Jake Paul, clearly there's a reason for that, right? And here's the other thing. So when I first was thinking about this, I'm like, dude, maybe they just let Masvidal out of his contract, Maybe. I mean, they didn't, but I thought maybe they did because I'm looking at what they did for Cowboy, Jose Aldo, um, you know, Luke Rockhold, guys like that. Like, dude, these guys, it's not like these guys had no brand value and they retired and UFC let them go and they let them go do their thing, right? They let Rockhold go fight in BKFC. They let that happen, which was surprising to me, honestly, because that's not how they had done things traditionally. Masvidal is a slightly different ball game because with Masvidal, there's real money to be made, right? So like what, what, what it seems like the new, uh, the new policy with the UFC is are guys who really put in the work with the UFC and really gave everything they had to the UFC and then they retire. The UFC will let them go, dude. As long as there's not some tremendous value to be had by another fight that they have, you know, that UFC wants to be involved in in one way or another, right? Jose Aldo, you know, had his day. Cowboy had his day. Rockhold had his day. But what are you going to do with those guys? Right? There's not some big blockbuster pay-per-view that you're going to put on with any of those three guys. There's not. It's not there. Right? Now, Masvidal falls into the same category in one way where he gave everything to the UFC. No one is ever going to say that Masvidal left a single scrap on the table. He went all in for the UFC. He fought his balls off in every single fight. He never gave an inch to anyone. He has granite balls, and he left it all on the table. And so if that were the criteria, the UFC would let him out of his contract. But it's Masvidal, right? So doing one of these fights with one of these other guys has a lot of money there, dude. There's a lot of value to get. So... Here's the other thing. Here's, here's the real criteria to consider, right? Is the UFC going to just use his contract to not allow him to fight? No. Why would they do that, right? Why would they do that? There's no, why would they do that? But at the same time, the only way that they get any value out of this is if they're involved in one way or another, right? So whether they co-promote, whether they do whatever, you know, again, I'm, I'm just, you know, <laughs> Stepping dangerously close to the thing I can't talk about, but like, in my opinion, based on the the lay of the landscape, things that I know are going on, the likelihood that that George is just completely locked up and doesn't end up fighting one of these guys is very slim, very slim. Those guys are the best options. So if you were, uh, if you had to bet on whether or not one of those fights happen, I would p- always bet on black. I don't even know what that means, but yeah, bet on that. Uh, and then you got the Nate Diaz thing, right? So Nate Diaz. As you guys know, is co- or I mean, I think you guys know, he's co-promoting the Jake Paul fight, right? So Nate Diaz had the option to take a deal, fight against uh, you know, whatever, fight against Jake Paul or whatever, uh, in just like a flat rate capacity, but he chose to co-promote it. So he stands to make much more money now, probably, 
right? He turned down a guarantee in order to co-promote. Good for him. And, uh, you know, he stands to do very, very well, okay? So once he's gotten a taste of, of promotions, it's interesting that they said, you know, they were like, so what do you want to do? You want to do Conor McGregor in boxing, the trilogy in boxing or MMA? He's like, hell no, we're not going to do it in boxing. We're doing an MMA. So what does that tell you? He's not going to do an MMA fight external of the UFC. That means he plans on doing this Jake Paul fight, going back to UFC and doing the Conor fight, you know? which is very exciting. He's running out of time. I mean, listen, dude, like these guys don't have forever to do this. Like a 42 year old Moss at all. That's, you know what I mean? Like Nate Diaz, same thing. Like they got a couple years to do this and I think they're going to get these all done. I really do. I really think all these fights are going to get done. I think Nate Diaz is going to fight Jake Paul, regardless of the, you know, maybe, I mean, dude, if Jake Paul just, just starched him or something, then maybe he doesn't go do the Connor fight, but that seems incredibly unlikely to me. You know, if you really go look at the shots that he ate against Connor and, and just kept on coming zombie style, Jake Paul in a boxing glove, it seems very unlikely that he's going to be able to catch him that clean with a boxing glove on and just starch him. You know what I mean? So my guess is that Nate Diaz does this fight and then moves on and goes back to UFC, signs and fights Connor, and he makes an enormous amount of money. He is going to make so much money. So much money. These guys are making so much money. But anyway, so uh, I think that's about as much as I could say about this. But nonetheless, I'm glad that you guys hung out to watch. I want to talk about one other thing. Uh, so while I've got you guys, uh, some people were asking me yesterday, right? Like I, I, they, I was on the, uh, the MMA Holes live stream yesterday, and people were like, what's the last fight you got in? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I armbarred two guys yesterday. They're all, oh, and I'm like, I, and they're like, no, 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 street fight. And I'm like, oh, street fight. Fuck, I don't know. Okay, like I haven't gotten in a street fight forever because I'm a grown up, dude. If you're a grown up, you should be looking for ways not to street fight. You know what I mean? But I thought to myself, I was like, you know how I originally really blew up on TikTok was telling stories about old street fights, you know, and I would tell them in like these really like these multiple part stories. And so I figured if you're hanging out today, I can revisit some of those because I haven't told them in like Two, two years, you know, you guys might know some of them, might not know others. I mean, obviously I told my best ones back then. So if you've been with me from the very beginning, then you probably heard them. But nonetheless, let's just, you know, I figured like, uh, I don't know, it's Thursday. I'll tell a story, dude. Let me think about which one I want to tell. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story of when my best friend's girlfriend had the scariest night of her entire life as a result of a fight that we got in. So... I went to Chico State, right? So I went to Chico State. I lived there. You know, I was there for, I was there for a long time. <laughs> An embarrassing amount of time. And I lived with this guy, Michael Petrie, who looks exactly like Conor McGregor when Conor McGregor has his face shaved. It's actually really uncanny and bizarre. I was actually, that's whose, that's whose party I was at, uh, surprise party I was at this weekend. But so I think this was the second year that we lived together. We had just gotten this new like uh, duplex condo. We lived on, anybody who knows uh, Chico, we lived on Ivy Street at the cross section of Ivy and 7th. And as a matter of fact, the guys I was with this Saturday are the exact guys minus one dude exactly of who was at this this story I'm about to tell. So we were we were at my, uh, my condo. We were like, you know, drinking booze, having a good time. We were going to this party that was kind of like two blocks down and around the corner in a little while. We're hanging out. We're not even that drunk, dude. Like it's, it's probably like, nine o'clock it's not even late right it's er certainly early to end up getting in a street fight so it's nine o'clock something like that me and my friend jason are standing outside smoking a cigarette disgusting that's how long ago this was dude if someone i i wouldn't even let someone smoke a cigarette around me now and i was smoking one repulsive so we had on some song i know what song it was i just don't want to sing it uh but we had a song on and my buddy jason was like singing it right like a fucking goof out in front of our condo and these three guys walk by one of them was wearing like this like retro mets jersey and then i mean he's really the only one who i like remember really well he's wearing this like metro retro mets jersey he had his two buddies with him and they were walking by and my buddy jason's just like singing right so they walk by us and they like stop. We we had we didn't even look at these guys. It was just like Jason singing, and I'm laughing at him, right? So these three guys decide they just saw that there was two of us, right? So they decided like you know they're like oh shit, hey why don't we well let's earn our stripes tonight, dog? There's three of us. There's only two of them. Let's go punk these guys, dog. Let's go punk these guys. 
So, and also I was, we were dressed like we were going to like a, you know, I was in like a polo shirt. These guys look like, you know, they look like they thought they were like gangsters, right? I'm in like a polo shirt. Jason's probably in something similar. And so that we look like easy marks, not that, not that. So they turn back around. They're like, Hey, what the fuck you say, bro? The fuck you say? And Jason and I are like looking at each other. We're like, are you talking to us? And the guy's all, yeah, man, what the fuck did you just say? We're like, nothing, dude. He's singing. You like, uh, you like bone thugs in har- harmony, you know? Because he was singing, you know, he was singing Bone and Biggie. That's what he was singing. I'm not singing it, though. And uh, he's all, nah, man. You're, this is all this Mets guy, right? All the retro Mets guy. His other two friends are all, mm. So he comes walking this way, and he's all, don't be talking shit, you know, when we're walking by, bro. Don't be fucking talking. He's just one of these, like, he literally, this is one of these guys that, like, looks for it, and then he, you know, gets to tell his friends, oh, we punk these guys, dude. So my other three friends who are inside come up to the door, and they hear... And at first, I'm just like, guy, he's singing a song. Like, what? He's singing a fucking song, dude. Like, just relax. Guy would not let it go, dude. And so Mike LaPetri, my best friend, Mr. Fucking Good Influence, came up. And the guy just bap, 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 bap. And Mike got in my ear. He's all, dude, Jesse. He's like, don't let him say that shit. Go light this motherfucker up. He's like, I don't even know if he, like, he's just being like mischievous. He's just like fucking with me. He's all, don't let him. He wasn't like even serious necessarily. He's like, don't let him talk like that. Go like this fucking guy up. I was like, all right. So I went and blitzed this guy, right? Pulled his shirt over his head and we whipped his fucking ass. And then my friends beat the shit out of his friends. Sent them down the road. I pulled the guy's jersey off of his head, right? So like he's running away. I'm like, dude, you forgot your Mets jersey, dude. So we hung his jersey on the wall in our in our fucking apartment, right? And we're all hyped up, dude. We're like young, idiotic fucking morons. We just beat the shit out of these three guys who earned it. They fucking came up to us. We didn't do anything. And so we're like, all right, dude, let's go to the party, man. Let's fucking go. Mike's girlfriend just got to our house. Now they basically live together with us. Like for for all intents and purposes, they basically lived with us. So she's like, I'm just going to stay in, you know, like I don't want to go. Like just go have fun and come back whenever. We're like, all right. She, which is really bizarre because she would have ne- like she was super jealous I have no idea why she would normally she would have just made Mike stay with her but so she stays there by herself so we walk down the street we end up crossing the street to go like down the other road and as we're walking towards this other house the three guys whose asses we just kicked are like down this hall like the, down this thing the dude still has his shirt off obviously I fucking hung his shirt on our wall and he's talking to this huge group of guys right and they're like bah, 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 bah. and we saw them and we just kind of were like all right and we just walk by so we go to the party we do whatever you know we're just having a good time maybe like fuck i don't know i I have no idea how long 15 minutes later right 15 minutes later mike grabs us he's like they're back in our house and he beelines out of there so we run behind him we call uh, like another like i don't know like a couple other guys from our from our crew and we're like dude there are guys like attacking our house so we are running down the street go around the corner, get to our house. Our other friends are coming up the street the other way and we like converge on our house and these guys are gone, right? Like, you know, I I have no idea how long they were actually there for, but all of our windows are broken, okay? Everything's all fucked up. We go into the house, Jessica, Mike's girl, like, (laughs) I don't even know how to even describe her face. She was terrified. Like literally terrified. Apparently these guys had brought like, you know, as she, we didn't see them, but as she described it, like she said that there must've been 20 guys there and they were throwing rocks through all of our windows. They were up on our roof. They hopped the fence. They were trying to kick our back. Like we had a sliding glass door in the back. They were trying to kick our sliding glass door in. And she was the only person in there. She's a fucking girl that weighs 115 pounds, dude. And so, you know, I mean, she knew we had gotten in a fight. She wasn't there when we got a fight or whatever, but she was so fucking scared. And so, you know, it's still, I bet you if you asked her about it now, she would be like, that's the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. And we never saw those guys ever again. But it was a disaster for our windows. It was a disaster for Mike's girlfriend. And that was actually one of the very first, like, big fights that we got in in college. Like, well, is that right? I don't know. A lot came after that. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, there's one for you. If you want to hear more, let me know in the comments. If you don't, then just, you should have turned the fucking video off, geek. Anyway, that's what I got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, tell your friends. Peace.